Okay, today we are making koldune, which is a Lithuanian meat dumpling. I'm gonna work on the table, so I'm cleaning it thoroughly right now. I need to knead dough here, just like when I used this very same table to make pasta. This is going to be tough because it was very hard to find information in English about this dish. But I will talk more about that on the daily show itself. Let's focus on cooking on this video. Okay, let's start with the prep. I need my trusty chef's knife and my steel. First, let's begin by chopping the onion. Do you guys remember what the term is for cutting vegetables into small cubes? If you said brunoise, you got it right. Next, we got some spring onion here. Let's chop off the roots first and discard it. And then we're gonna chop the rest for our sour cream and onion topping for the dish. Next, we are going to work on the meat filling. First, we need to beat eggs to create a binder, a sort of glue to keep the filling packed together inside the dumpling. Don't be shy on the seasoning here. Once it's inside the dumpling, you won't be able to adjust it anymore. So use a lot of salt and pepper. Next is the ground beef. Some recipes I have read use the combination of ground meat like veal, pork, along with the beef. But as always, I'm limiting the recipe to what you can easily find at the grocery store. Onion goes in. A 
Okay, now I'm chopping some chives. I feel like it will add a little bit of flavor to the filling and this was left over from last week's cooking show. And I don't want to waste it, especially when there is an opportunity to use it. I'm going to add more salt. I feel like this is still under seasoned, especially when you think about it. It's going to be wrapped in dough since it's a filling. Alright, I covered it and set it aside inside the fridge for now while we are going to clear this area because we're going to work on the dough. Now I normally make the dough in a stand mixer, but I did not bring it today. So we are going old school. And that is by putting the flour on a table, making a little crater in the middle, crack the eggs in the middle, and then we're gonna combine it from there. Although I think I did not make the crater big enough. Uh oh, uh oh, it's uh oh. All right, I'm, I'm gonna mix this thing now. All right, one more egg, there you go. Dough is looking a little bit too dry, so I'm adding some water here. I made a mistake off camera here. You see me add water, but I still felt that it's a little bit dry, so I added a couple more eggs off camera. This will cause the dough to be more yellow like pasta instead of white like a dumpling. I should have just continued to add water instead of more eggs. Now this will all depends on how the dough feels and right now they, it feels a little bit too sticky so I'm gonna dust it with a little bit more flour and then knead it again for a good uh, 5 minutes and see how it looks. And that's done. Seems quick, but trust me, I was kneading that dough for a good 15 minutes. I was just making it quick for the video. Okay, we're gonna roll the dough out to flatten it. Make sure that the rolling pin is dusted with flour so it won't stick. Whoa, the camera is going all wonky with the autofocus. I'll cut to the chase because you might get dizzy.
I basically just need to flatten it enough so that it would fit in my pasta roller. And I'm gonna divide it into several sections so, well, again, it would fit in the pasta roller. Alright, so as always, you start with the largest setting on the pasta roller. Uh, in this roller's case, it's a 7. Then adjust it to the next number, uh, the 6 here, after rolling your dough. And repeat it until it gets to the thinness that you want. In this dish's case, I want it to go all the way to 2. Any scrap dough that you cut off can be kneaded into another dough ball and rolled flat through the roller so it won't be wasted. Just remember to add a bit of water if it feels dry. Of course, we're going to reset it back to 7 since this is a new dough ball. Start with the thickest setting and then roll it and adjust until it gets to the thinness that you want.
this is pretty much similar to pasta dough. Making dough is hard work and time consuming. Why do you think Italian grandmas are well respected by their families? Okay, since it's time consuming, we're just gonna skip ahead on the video. On this step, you need to cut circles out of the dough. Of course, this is much easier to do with a cookie cutter. However, there is none in the kitchen. I found about 30 heart-shaped cookie cutters in one of the cabinets, but there's no circle one somehow. So I used a jar's lid to cut the circles off. My palm got red from pushing down on that lid. So here I have 12 circles and I'm going to fill 6 of them with our meat filling. The other 6 will be a cover. I'm using water to wet the edges so that they will stick to each other and not burst open as you cook them. To seal them, pinch them closed as you try to push any air pockets out before you seal it close in the end. If there's any air pockets, that's gonna cause trouble once you start cooking these dumplings. Okay, we're reaching the end of the day, so I will have to cook them tomorrow. Luckily, you can easily store these dumplings in a tray. Just dust it with flour so they don't stick. Oh, and of course cover it. I used saran wrap on this one. Alright, let's cook these. We're going to cook them in boiling salted water. This may look like it's a lot of salt, but remember that most of them are staying in the water. Only some of them will stick to the dumplings. Here's a tray of dumplings I got from the fridge, ready to be put in once the water boils.
Prepare a place to drain them out. In this case, I put a strainer over a bowl. Okay, let's make our sour cream and onion topping. Let's put a big dollop of uh, plain sour cream on our bowl. And we'll mix it with some spring onions that we chopped. We're gonna add some onion powder to this mix to give it a little bit... Wait a second, where is the... I guess I have to use a spoon to sprinkle it. Anyways, as I was saying, we need some onion powder to kind of uh, add a little bit more onion flavor without adding a little too much of the uh, spring onion. Okay, now that's done, let's begin plating. I was placing the dumplings in a circle because I was thinking of putting the dollop of uh, sour cream in the middle. But I think I changed my mind. I'm just gonna put them all to the side and then put the sour cream in the corner. Alright, let's grab a sprig of parsley, just so that it looks nice. Let's put it on top of the sour cream. And then we're gonna sprinkle some paprika on top. And that's only for looks, so it doesn't look so boring. It won't really make anything spicy, you won't taste it.
And there you go. I guess it's time for me to taste it, see if it tastes good. Uh, that's kind of a mouthful. It's a little bit too big. I have ideas to improve this. Like I said, it doesn't quite fit in one bite, but it tastes good. All right, I'm gonna go cook the rest of them. Whoa, what happened? They all disappeared. I guess I'll wash the dish. So while everyone was munching away, this is what I was doing. So remember when I said it's a mouthful? Well, I made some dumplings folded in half so they are smaller. You see them here as I get them out of the boiling water. Now we're going to make a sauce from our leftover ingredients from last week. First we need a pan. We'll heat this up. 
And we're gonna get some butter to melt here. Now we're gonna melt this butter and actually uh, cook it a little bit longer till it browns a little. Light brown, not dark brown. It, it would be burned if it's dark brown. Just light brown. Once our butter is browned, we're going to pan fry our dumplings in this pan with the butter sauce. Of course, it's not just going to be butter, we're going to add a little bit more to it. In goes some chopped parsley for some color. And some ground sage. Uh, it's better to use fresh sage, but because I don't have that right now, I'm just using leftovers. I'm just going to go with the dried ground version. Give it a good mix. And now that it's done, I'm trying to kind of uh, do this to get the dumplings out without too much of the oil coming with it. Too much of the butter. We don't want this to be too oily. Then to finish it off, I just grated some of our leftover Swiss cheese over it, and there you go. Alright, as always, here's the recipe, and you may pause it to copy or take a picture of it. 